from the south, you probably got here pretty fast. <laughs> uh, we've been doing some of our famous Kansas blend, and uh, yet, in all of this, we can still praise the Lord even when we get mad at the wind and things start coming down. I notice there's various items floating around the culvert today. Um, fortunately, one of them isn't our new roof. A um, couple of announcements. One is that uh, we've got quite an online, uh, tried a couple of things. We've got some online followers. Um, we had 21 last week that watched this online. And uh, you know, some of those are two people watching once, so that was a pretty good deal. And the week, the following week, we had 15. So it's, it's been pretty good. Uh, so thank you for those of you who. Uh, who watch it when you're away, when you're away, and I, I try to get it to you. And if you need to get the message to somebody, let me know, and I can find a way to get it to them um, for the service. <coughs> Our charge conference celebration is kind of shrinking down a little bit. Um, Dee Williamson caught the COVID-19, <coughs> so she's not feeling um, fully recharged yet. So it's going to be a fairly short it will be like a celebration, but it's online. So if any of you want the link to that, I can email it to you. Just let me know. Um, we've got, so I didn't get the jar out. If someone gets bored during the service, they get the, the jar for the food baskets. Um, we've been, over the years, sending food to the, for the food baskets this year because we're not assembling together as much. We're just uh, sending the money to love, well, to the OCMA, the Ministers Association, and then we are uh, then we are putting that money to Jeans IJ and then they're buying the things for them for the baskets and then they're filling them there. And they were very willing to do that. So if you want to put some money in, Gail is, is getting the basket out for you. And we'll want, to, we'll want to count that today, and I'll take it. I can take that to, uh, to the office, to the loving office. So anyway, if you want to put a little money in there during an offering, you can do that. So normally it was about a dollar. We gave 50 packages of pancake mix, baking mix, and it's one to $2. So anyway, if you want to do that, just put the uh, put the money in that jar for the food baskets. Anything else that I'm forgetting? I know I'm forgetting something, but any other announcements? Oh, I know what I was going to say. If you want to do the decorating this year, somebody needs to, to pick a day so we all know. I'm okay with just a few things up here, but I know... It's a tradition to have a tree up there and, and use it for Advent. If you would like to do that, uh, I don't want it to be an obligation to anyone. But uh, if anyone would like to do that, uh, get some people together, and I'd be glad to help. I don't get what to Anything else? <clears throat> Probably do announcements all day, but um, the main thing is that we're here to worship the Lord. I'm glad that you came in and, and came to worship, and we're looking forward to what God is going to do for us today. Let's um, sing All Hail King Jesus, 2069 in the Faith We Sing. <laughs>
though the elections are only for here on earth, we already have our leader that we follow, so don't get too worked up about all the hoopla with the elections. There's uh, always going to be dishonest people in this world, and there's going to be people who will cheat on the elections. Um, I, there, there are people who cheated on the last elections, but regardless, God is our leader, and God uh, has a hand in who gets elected. Sometimes he reflects what the people want. So don't let that um, get you too worked up. He said, don't be anxious for anything. So that's what we're here to do, is to worship God and let go of our anxieties. So let's take a moment to let go of any of our grudges we might have picked up during the week, any things that keep us away from the Lord. Dump the load of the bad stuff and let in the good. And let your hearts be open to what God has for us. Because God wants to speak to you today. He wants to speak through His Word. He wants to speak through music. He wants to speak through each of us to one another. He's got a message for you today. It's up to us to be receptive and listen. So let's quiet our hearts, forget about the world for a little bit, and focus on our King Jesus, and um, then I'll lead us in opening prayer, and then I'll read the psalm. O oh God, we worship you, and we give you our hearts and our souls. Today we give you the praise for being our king and leading, leading us as a church. And we know that you are Lord of lords, and that somehow with all of this um, anxiousness in this world, that you are leading this world on, um, even though many people aren't following you, you have a plan for us. So we pray that we would be faithful in our following of you. We pray that today you would speak to us, that you would guide us with your Holy Spirit, and help us to be receptive for what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, let's turn to Psalm 123 if you'd like to follow in your Bible. Otherwise, I'll just read it for you. And um, the Psalms are great. I just kind of read some of the happy ones. Some of them are really troubling when you read about what was going on during those days and how David and others tried to deal with them. But we know that God somehow, although I don't understand it, works all these things out. And the most important thing is that we do this. I lift my eyes up to you. In to you whose throne is in heaven, as the eyes of slaves look to the hand of the master, as the eyes of a maid look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows his mercy. So our, have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we have endured much contempt, we have endured much ridicule from the proud, and much contempt from the arrogant. And certainly that fits our days today, but we can look to our Lord who somehow will bring us through this during our difficult times and somehow bring us through all this wind that keeps um, hitting our state. Although Kansas is known for its wind, it sure seems like it's troublesome. We've got a corn shop that we can't keep up now, and I put it in with rebar. <laughs> and, uh, so three, I have a tripod of rebar that I put in every year, and uh, some years it just Kansas wind beats it. So uh, that's a minor problem, though, and uh, we're praying, of course, for safety, for fire danger, 
today the, from fire danger there's a, a big problem with the wind and a lot of people out so we'll keep keep that in our minds and our prayers too we're going to do something a little different Let's see if I've got the right one no no not yet uh, we're going to do he has made me glad 2270. Oh. 
going to hear from 1 Thessalonians and hear what um, Paul had to say about end time events. So we're to get along with one another and love one another um, and to help each other. Jenna was asking about my cataract surgery and I didn't realize why I was wearing my sunglasses. And I don't normally wear sunglasses, uh, but since my cataract surgery, I've, they've told me to wear them and so I forget to take them off sometimes. And I, I was trying to read the psalm today and I thought, man, my glasses are getting bad. <laughs> so my regular glasses are somewhere. Oh, they're here. <laughs> so we've got various things that come on, the day-to-day -day problems that come on, and uh, reminders, and uh, trying to, to make this world work, and God helps us out during, during those times. Um, medical, medical care costs a lot these days, but I'm grateful for the medical care we have. Just think of um, a generation ago the problems that they faced with heart problems, with uh, problems with glasses, and all kinds of things that now they can correct. So I'm thankful for that. But we want to make sure that we pray for our, uh, our doctors and our nurses and our hospitals at this time, because um, a lot of them in the big cities are put under stress with the extra COVID cases along with all of the staff that is in isolation and in quarantine because of their exposure to, to uh, COVID. So it's made it difficult. There's a shortage of staff and then there's an extra surge of people coming in. So let's pray for uh, our medical <coughs> care and pray for the regular things like cataract surgery that has to go on even though uh, the COVID has affected and set some people back, especially for the more serious things like um, cancer treatments and, and uh, examinations that people put off. Uh, this is complicated, the whole thing. So let's pray for our doctors and nurses and hospitals and aides and all the people to stay healthy so that they can help take care of us. So for our health care system, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other things that have come to mind. Um, I think we ought to pray for our school systems too. I'll pray for them in our regular pastoral prayer, but um, just the, the uncertainty and for teachers who like to plan ahead, this is just like driving them nuts. Every, no week seems to be the same. And, uh, and also that the kids, some of the kids will learn learn to learn on their own through this, but some kids will uh, kind of be left behind. And so let's pray for the kids and for the bus drivers and for everybody that has a part in trying to make uh, the kids learn during these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pray for Christina. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. So let's pray. 
pray for your sister-in-law. Is there a first name? No. Lil. Let's pray for Lil. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayers. Anything else? I don't want to um, cut anybody off if you're waiting. I know a lot of people have unspoken requests, things that they really don't want to make public. And uh, we'll have a time when we can pray for those after the the opening or the uh, prayer song and then there'll be a moment of silence so if you have something you need to pray about then and if you need to get things cleaned up in your heart uh, do that then and, uh, and then I'll lead us in the pastoral prayer so let's sing our prayer song it's thank you Lord it's in the bulletin uh, the second song <laughs> Thank you, Father, for your blessings on us, and thank you for all that you've done for us. We praise your holy name, and great is your name, and greatly to be praised. And we thank you for the power of your word, and we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that works in our nation, even during these difficult times. We pray for our president and our uh, Congress. We pray that you would help them to be able to get the work done that needs to be done, and for the courts to be uh, fair in, in their dealings. We pray for the, um, the election that is still up in the air in many states. I pray uh, for those, especially for the, the senator and, and the Senate and representative seats that are still open and still in contention, and also the presidential election. We pray that you would guide in all of that and have your hand in all of this. We trust you completely, O oh God. We pray for our local government, our state, and county, and also our city officials, that you would bless them and guide them during these times, and help them to do the very best that they can to help our community. We pray for those in Culver and the surrounding community that are hurting. We pray that you would bless them, help them to come um, close to you and hold on to you as we have these difficult times, and especially for those that are suffering from um, hurts on the inside. I pray that you would bring healing to them. We pray for our military and for those that are separated from their families at this time. Pray for those that are protecting our nation. We pray that you would bless them for their service. We thank you for each one that served. We pray that you would bless them for their um, service in protecting our nation. We pray for the families that are separated now, that you would keep them close at heart. And, that, and I pray that they would be able to communicate freely with one another, and, uh, even though they're miles apart, be able to stay close. We pray for our local emergency responders, for firefighters especially, and emergency responders, uh, EMTs, 
that may have to deal with a fire danger today. We pray for the police and those that keep us safe. I pray that you would bless all of them and help them to do their work and stay healthy. We pray for our uh, schools that you would bless the children and the students. Help them to learn each day and not neglect what needs to be done and help them to focus on what they can do to grow both socially and also uh, in knowledge and be able to be successful when they graduate. We pray for the teachers and the and administrators and aides and bus drivers, and librarians, everybody has to deal with the kids and to keep them safe and help them to be able to cope with the uh, changes that come. We pray for the hospitals that we would be with the maintenance folks and uh, those who prepare the meals and keep the laundry clean, that you would provide personnel. I know sometimes they can't hardly find enough people to do those jobs. That you would bless them for their work, those that take care of <coughs> keeping the place clean and keeping people fed. We pray for the administrators and the nurses and doctors and everybody that works on the floor. I pray that you would keep them safe and healthy and mostly we would also pray for the patients that uh, are isolated from their families, especially those that are older and can't visit with their families. Uh, I pray that you would strengthen them and heal them, but also keep them um, in heart, not discouraged. Keep them, protect them from, from the discouragement that can come and the depression that can come from not seeing their loved ones. We pray also for those who are incarcerated. We pray that you would bless them, bring them close to you. We pray that you would uh, help them to be reconciled with their families and with their loved ones. And also that they would be reconciled to you and their communities. We pray for our missionaries that you would bless them and protect them. Provide for them, especially with difficulties in travel. Many are even quarantined in the countries they're serving in. I pray that you would bless them and keep them safe. Pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray that you would bless them and protect them and blanket them with your love. We pray for North Korea, that you would give them a good leader and help them to be able to worship freely in that country. And now we would pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. At this time, we have an opportunity to respond to God's kindness. You can give an offering either, either in the blue basket there, or if you'd like to give for the food baskets, that's in the jar there. So give as God leads.
Father, we thank you for these offerings. We thank you for everybody who participated. We thank you for your multiple blessings to us. And we pray now that you would use these offerings to reach the community for Jesus and that we might be able to show people the way. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. At this time we're going to hear the gospel reading.
So they were very carefully, if you read that the, the way the scribes carefully examined and carefully copied the scriptures down, they were being very careful about that and they were very um, wary of anyone messing with an interpretation of the scripture beside the traditional ones. And of course Jesus was um, doing mostly traditional interpretations but giving some new light to them, but also some new interpretations to some old scriptures and they didn't really like that. So this applies to the Pharisees and the people back then, but what about us today? We've all been given certain talents. We've all been given certain abilities. We've all been given certain things that we can do, and what happens is um, we get complacent. We begin to think that I don't have to do anything because somebody else is going to do it. That can really be difficult if you have a, a great preacher that can bring in all kinds of people and all, all you've got to do is just come and the preacher just preaches and you just go home and that's all you've got to do. And that's not the way that God designed his church. That Jesus wants his church to have everyone participate. We listen to musicians, you know, like I go through and I pick online musicians for our service and there's some great musicians, and you can think, oh, that's so great, you know, they're so good, I wish I had talent like that. Um, I know our brother Donovan has great talent, he uses it for the glory of God, and that's great. But we can't just lean on their abilities. We can't lean on the great preachers that you hear. You could hear um, all these wonderful sermons. I, every once in a while I'll see a Billy Graham sermon come up somewhere, and listen to him, and what a great preacher. But we can't just lean on... Billy Graham and the great musicians, we're to do our part. We may say, well, I don't have much, and so we can just say, I'll just take care of it. Maybe we uh, became a Christian um, early on in our, our life. Maybe we decided to follow Jesus early on. Maybe we def decided to, to be a disciple or a Christian later in life. Or maybe we don't know when. I was thinking about the, today, we've got some teachers here who deal with books, and I can't remember exactly what I wanted to read. Maybe some of you can. Maybe some of you, the light came on and you read, but I just know I can read today thanks to the teachers. And some of us, our Christian faith has kind of come up that way. You don't know how you, when you first believed, but you know that today you believe. Uh, C.S. Lewis, interestingly enough, his conversion was kind of like that. He couldn't put a point on it, but he said he went to a picnic not believing. He came back from the picnic believing. He doesn't know exactly when the conversion took place. I don't know if it was a picnic. It was some outing. So we may not know exactly how we got here, but it's what do we do with it? So some people are so concerned that um, they want to know their faith so well that they read all about it. And some, in the early centuries, um, went out and became hermits. Because they were so worried about what the world, the effect the world might have on their soul, they isolated themselves from the world. And so they went out in the desert, and some people would come to them. But what did they find out? I don't know exactly, but from what I've read, the world followed them. So in other words, the things that they thought were affecting their soul, they thought were coming from the outside, but really what was inside was causing more problems yet. But some of the people um, worshipped, almost worshipped these guys that spent time in the desert or spent time as hermits for their faith. But Jesus said that's not what you're to do. You're to be out in the marketplace, you're to go out and what did the... He, he, who did he commend but the ones that stepped out and took a little risk? So instead of playing it safe and saying, I'm not going to go out in the marketplace, I'm not going to do anything that I might be um, affecting my faith, I'm going to just hold on, read scriptures, and stay inside, um, like COVID-19, stay inside um, and not do anything out in the world because I'm afraid my faith might become contaminated. And you realize that the Jews kind of did that with their isolation from foreigners at times. 
Um, sometimes they had to do it because they were so affected by the gods, but sometimes they did it and began to just look down on those people, even though some of those people were searching for God. So he's saying, don't just hold your faith in like this, he said. Let's get it out. Remember, there's other scriptures that I talked about getting your faith out, going up on a hill. It said your, your faith is like a city on a hill, like a, a, a lamp that you just don't put it under a basket. You try to, to get it out. You try to make sure it shines. Now, we might not think we have much of a lamp, um, but we do. It's not because of our own strength. It's because of what God shines through us. So once again, we see that these talents that were given were not, didn't come out of their own pocket. These people didn't, he didn't say, take ten talents out of your pocket and do something with it, or five talents. He said, um, I'm going to give these to you. Do something with them. So we see that today, this is a little different than the, than the scriptures then, or the times then. Because when Jesus was preaching to them, the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon them and gave, given them that power. Remember, they kind of waited around until the day of Pentecost. But when that power came, it shined through them and enabled them to do miraculous things, just common fishermen and common people. It's always amazing to me he didn't pick great scholars in his first disciples, did he? He didn't go to the synagogue and say, okay, you smart guys, I need some, we need some smart guys in here to, to come up with advice for, for these scriptures. He didn't. He, he took working folks out of the field, off the boat, and uh, a few tax collectors. Maybe they needed a little bit of financial advice. But he didn't take the great minds of the day, at least on the outward. Um, the way the world would look at great minds. But he took regular folks, but he shined through them with the power of his word. And he changed, um, he changed the world through these disciples. If you remember, there were very few that uh, were there for his ascension when he rose and went to heaven. But now that it comes to this century, we've got billions of people who have believed over the years. And it's because of those first disciples that didn't take that talent and hide it. Hide it yeah. Didn't take it and hide it. It didn't, it didn't remain hidden in their heart. But they got it out. They got it out. And they did something with it. So, um, when I read the scholars, usually when I, work, when I have a little question about something, um, there's a great deal about the chapter before, but there isn't much about um, the, work, the verses I'm looking up. But they were talking about talents. I wanted to find out, uh, be reminded, I've heard sermons on talents. I wanted to be reminded um, what that meant. And Barclay, who is the guy I go to a lot of times, uh, William Barclay, not Charles Barclay, the basketball player, but what, William Barclay, um, and he said that the talents were just a weight. We, didn't, we don't know exactly what they were weighing. But he said it was commonly used to use silver. So I've got some real silver. Usually I bring little pieces of junk along, but this is really good stuff. This is the silver. And so he gave them a certain weight of silver to, to invest. And um, if, if that would be the, the common interpretation of people would understand it. So they were given some, some real good stuff to go do something with. And we can tend to think, oh boy, if I had some silver, I could really do something with it. And if I had some money. But he, he didn't give it to rich people. He didn't um, give his message to rich people that would have lots of money to spend. Maybe some of them did become wealthy, but these were common folks. So what he has given to the common people that he was to give the gospel, used to get the gospel out, was he had given a gift or a talent. He has given you a gift or a talent. And he expects you to use it during these times. Um, 
this was given in parable form, so it's kind of harsh. You know, at the end of this, I didn't, I didn't include this because I want to shorten it up a little bit, but at the end he talks about that servant who just held on to his talent and didn't invest it, didn't try to do something with it. That person is going to be shut out, and it's going to be out in the darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, if you read that wrong, you think, oh, that's the way salvation is, that I've got to go out and work for my salvation, or I've got to do, uh, do something or I won't be saved. And that wasn't the message at all. It was to get the attention of the people um, so they wouldn't be complacent. There are enough parables like this where it's like you'll be shut out and everything, where you might begin to wonder. That's why the book of John was written, to give us that assurance, I believe, that it's not these actions that save us, but in those actions, not only are we helping others, but we're also in fellowship with God because he has called us to be his disciples. And in order for us to share in full fellowship with him, we have to be doing something, not just spending time studying about doing something. We have to take a little risk. And the important thing about the silver is that we tend to think that I don't have much to bring. Some of us say, well, you know, there's these people that can do all these things. I, uh, maybe some of you participated in sports in school or on the playground. And you always had that player that could do everything. He could run fast. She could kick the ball. Um, could, uh, could, was coordinated, could do the jump ropes. Stuff that I couldn't do. And you always look to those people and think, man, those are the ones that you really want on your team. Did you ever have to pick teams? And, uh, and people would get picked. Did you ever have that happen to you? And uh, we had to do that with dances too. Did you ever have that where you picked your partner for dancing? Did you guys still dance in school? I mean, we had to, we had to pick our partner. And I learned quickly that you'd grab somebody or you, you got stuck with somebody that couldn't do anything, even worse than you. So you, you, so you, you get picked. And, you know, by your talent. And we always wanted, to, there was always the two best people that we kept picked as captains. And so we always counted on them. But you know with a football team or with a whole team, if it's only the quarterback there, what happens if there's no lineman and there's a quarterback? Great quarterback, but he's going to get smashed. What if you have a wonderful offense, but no defense? You know, that works in basketball and football and baseball and anything. So it takes everybody. So if the church is just counting on a few of those people, the ones that we picked as captains in, on the volleyball or baseball team or the, or the kickball team, and there nobody else does what they're supposed to do, the team will fall apart. So as a church, we've got to, everybody has to do their part. And your talent, your gift that you've been given is far more precious than this silver or gold, if I had that. Those talents, those weights of gold are worth a lot, but not nearly as much as the gift that you have within you. And not nearly as valuable and useful in this world for what God has as what God has given you through the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's not neglect what God has given us and if you look in your bulletin, that our, our mission is to make disciples. That that should be how we're using our gifts when we focus on those things. Sure, we have to make a living, but we also have a full-time job of serving in his kingdom. And that we can't just neglect and become complacent as it's easy to do. And if we do that, look what happens to America. If people in the churches don't do what they're called to do, our nation will suffer. And I think that we probably have enough people that have taken their talent, their gift, put it in their pocket and say, I'll save this for a rainy day when I really need it. And they haven't taken that out and invested it into their communities, invested it into the people around them. And so we've seen not just um, people leaving the church, but also moral decay in our country. Because we haven't been doing our part as a church. Everybody working together as a church and a team 
to reach out. So don't hide your talent. Don't bury it. Invest it, even if it's in a small way. Use it, and God will do mighty things in our country and in our community. Amen. Let's go ahead and turn in our closing hymn. Turn our hymn books to our closing hymn. 98. 98. First and last.
Does it in our church? I'll bet you did. I was wondering if you could make it today. Wow. And then today, does anybody say that? Just some people in the water. Well, they need to count it today. Take it down to Jim and Janet. Give it to Jim and Janet. Give it to Jim and Janet. Yes. Okay, Jim. I didn't know you had to take it down. Jim. 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 Yeah, I've seen Marshall. Marshall. 